Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today, we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 307. 1934. Once, during Lent, I saw a great light and a great darkness over house and chapel. I saw the struggle of these two powers. 1934, Holy Thursday. Jesus said to me, I desire that you make an offering of yourself for sinners, and especially for those souls who have lost hope in God's mercy. God and Souls, an act of oblation. Before heaven and earth, before all the choirs of angels, before the Most Holy Virgin Mary, before all the powers of heaven, I declare to the one true God that today, in union with Jesus Christ, Redeemer of souls, I make a voluntary offering of myself for the conversion of sinners, especially for those souls who have lost hope in God's mercy. This offering consists in my accepting, with total subjection to God's will, all the sufferings, fears, and terrors with which sinners are filled. In return, I give them all the consolations which my soul receives for my communion with God. In a word, I offer everything for them, holy masses, holy communions, penances, mortifications, prayers. I do not fear the blows, blows of divine justice, because I am united with Jesus. O oh my God, in this way I want to make amends to you for the souls that do not trust in your goodness. I hope against all hope in the ocean of your mercy. My Lord and my God, my portion, my portion forever. I do not base this act of oblation on my own strength, but on the strength that flows from the merits of Jesus Christ. I will daily repeat this act of self-oblation by pronouncing the following prayer, which you yourself have taught me, Jesus. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. St. Maria Faustina of the Blessed Sacrament, Holy Thursday, during Holy Mass, March 29, 1934. I am giving you a share in the redemption of mankind. You are a solace in my dying hour. When I received permission from my confessor, Father Sopochko, to make this act of oblation, I soon learned that it was pleasing to God because I immediately began to experience its effects. In a moment, my soul became like a stone, dried up, filled with torment and disquiet. All sorts of blasphemies and curses kept pressing upon my ears. Distrust and despair invaded my heart. This is the condition of the poor people, which I have taken upon myself. At first I was very much frightened by these horrible things, but during the first opportune confession I was set at peace. Once, when I went outside the convent to go to confession, St. Michael's Church, I chanced upon my confessor, Father Sopochko, saying Mass just then. After a while, I saw the child Jesus on the altar, joyfully and playfully holding out his hands to him. But a moment later, the priest took the beautiful child into his hands, broke him up, and ate him alive. At that first instant, I felt a dislike for the priest for having done this to Jesus, but I was immediately enlightened in the matter and understood that this priest was very pleasing to God. Once, when I was visiting the artist Eugene Kazimirovsky, who was painting the image, and saw that it was not as beautiful as Jesus is, I felt very sad about it, but I hid this deep in my heart. When we had left the artist's house, Mother Superior, Irene, stayed in town to attend to some matters while I returned home alone. I went immediately to the chapel and wept a good deal. 
I said to the Lord, Who will paint you as beautiful as you are? Then I heard these words, Not in the beauty of the color, nor of the brush lies the greatness of this image, but in my grace. St. Faustina writes that she saw a great struggle between a great light and a great darkness over their house and convent during Lent. The Gospels, especially St. John's, is filled with imagery of light and darkness representing good and evil. That it happened over a religious house where there are many souls consecrated to God is not surprising. It happened over St. Faustina's convent where she was receiving special graces and the evil one was always trying to destroy God's plans. And finally, it happened during Lent, the preparation for Easter, which reminds us of the 40 days that Jesus spent in the desert preparing for his public ministry by fasting and praying and being tempted by the devil. So the spiritual battle is always ongoing. On Holy Thursday, the day Jesus made the offering of himself in the Last Supper and accepted his fate in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus asked Faustina to make an offering of herself, an oblation, like the sacrifice offered on the altar during the Mass. She is truly a victim soul. She unites herself with Jesus, and she gives her consolations from Holy Communion, etc., to sinners and those who have lost hope in God's mercy. And in exchange, she takes on all of their temptations, their blows, their uh, sufferings, their uh, anxieties, their fears, all kinds of difficulties. It wasn't easy. But she doesn't rely on her own strength, but on Jesus' strength. And she prays the beautiful prayer that Jesus taught her as a renewal of the offering each day. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. And Jesus gives her a share in our redemption. By offering our prayers and sufferings in union with what Jesus suffered on the cross, we can help to save souls. Now Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was sufficient to save all souls for all time. But people have to open their hearts to the gift of salvation in order to accept it and to receive it. And that's where our prayers and sacrifices can come in. We can pray for their conversion. We can pray that they would open their heart to receive the gifts that Jesus is offering to each of us. St. Faustina once saw Father Sopochko saying Mass, and on the altar she saw a vision of the child Jesus playing. And then she saw Father Sopochko eat the child Jesus, which seemed strange to her, but she soon realized that it was him receiving the Eucharist, and that is really Jesus, the child Jesus, in the Eucharist. Then in the end, St. Faustina talks about the image, the artist who painted the image. The image doesn't represent Jesus as beautiful as he is, and she was sad and disappointed, but Jesus says that uh, Not in the beauty of the color nor of the brush lies the greatness of this image, but in my grace. So through every image of the divine mercy, the graces of the Lord flow out to us, and that is why it's such a a powerful and great image. 